He was known as the Maradona or the Romario of the Salento, Fabrizio Micoli. A 5 foot 6 striker was small in stature, but a huge character on the pitch blessed by the footballing gods. Powerful yet delicate, clever and bold in his attacks. He was one of the most extraordinary artists to grace the Italian pitches in the 2000s, bringing joy to tens of thousands of people in the stands. This is the story of an Italian cult hero whose career ended in the shadows of the Italian Mafia. Micoli grew up in the small town San Donato di Lecce in the heel of Italy. In 1992, when Micoli was 13 years old, the Italian powerhouse AC Milan spent 10 million lira to bring him into their youth academy. So at this young age, Micoli already had to move all the way to the other side of the country to play football. You know, he scored 28 goals in one season. He was a very successful player in their youth academy, but he missed his home and his mom. So three years later, he took it upon himself to leave the academy of the biggest Italian club at that time. It's a decision that many would not dare to make. His mom welcomed him back home. He had a failed trial at his boyhood club Lecce, but Serie C one side Casarano, which was also close to his home, gave him a chance. This is where he truly fell in love with the game again. He would make his professional debut at the age of 17 and a year later Serie B side Ternana showed interest and bought him. During his four years at Ternana he scored 32 goals in 120 appearances and 15 of those goals came in his last season. And by that time the small boy from Salento was getting on the radar of the Italian powerhouses. He was powerful, fast, could score with both feet and had a sublime technique. By Italian media he was even dubbed the new Del Piero. It was obvious that Micoli had something special so Juventus pulled the trigger and brought him to Serie A. He was initially loaned out to fellow Serie A side Perugia where he put on some very impressive displays. He became the top scorer in the Coppa Italia and he guided Perugia to a surprising ninth place finish. His efforts also saw him getting his first call up to the Italian national team. The season after back at Juventus he proved to be a very good alternative to Davi Trezeguet and Alessandro Del Piero scoring eight goals that season. However his relationship with the Juventus manager at that time Fabio Capello deteriorated and so did his relationship with the club's general manager Luciano Moggi who was the main character in Italy's biggest football scandal, Calcio Poli. Author Simon Martin revealed in his book Sport Italia, the Italian love affair, that Moji had told Micoli that he was only part of the Italian national team because of him and that another call up could disappear at any point. This threat, however, did not seem to scare Micoli at all as he would later go on to testify against Moji in the uncovering of the Calcio Poli case. But due to these bad relationships, his time at Juventus had to come to an end. Especially after another legendary striker, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, was brought in. He was forced to leave and he found his home at the newly promoted side Fiorentina, who were in desperate need for a top striker. Mikuli would have a great season, scoring 12 goals and providing 4 assists as well. And the next summer, surprisingly, he was auctioned back by Juventus and straight away loaned out to Benfica. And the love he couldn't find at Juventus, he did find in Portugal. Benfica stole his heart and he quickly became a fan favorite. In an interview in 2016, he even stated that playing for the Portuguese side was the best experience in his career. But after his two-year loan spell at Benfica came to an end, he returned back to Italy. And Micoli, who was 28 at the time, moved to the Sicilian side Palermo. And Palermo was a club on the rise. They had just come off the back of two fifth place finishes in a row and they had qualified for a UEFA Cup. And at Palermo is where Micoli started to become a true legend. Not only did Palermo's fans adore him because of his loyalty and the fact that he was a southerner, he also became the club's captain and established himself as one of the best players in the Serie A at that time. In this period Micoli was as vital to Palermo as Antonio Di Natale to Udinese or Francesco Totti to AS Roma. Micoli would become one of the most iconic players to ever wear the pink shirt. His work ethic and his willingness to sacrifice everything for the team made him extremely popular. He amassed 179 appearances 
81 goals and 49 assists. And in his fifth season at the club, he became Palermo's all-time top scorer. You know, it was a perfect love story until the summer of 2013. Palermo just came off a terrible campaign that saw them being relegated back to the Serie B. And at the same time, an investigation was launched into Micoli. Micoli loved the club, he loved living in Palermo and not only did he want to be club captain, he also wanted to be there for everyone around him. Now he was a very popular figure and everyone knew him and in the past we've seen this happen to Diego Armando Maradona or Rene Higuita as well. You know, cult heroes who were extremely popular and were just hanging around with the wrong people. And so did Mikoli because he also became friends with people that he thought he could trust. And one of them was Mauro Lauricella. He was the son of Antonino Lauricella, a Sicilian mafia boss who was a key figure in the Cosa Nostra. Mikoli was accused of by four SIM cards for Mauro Lauricella and a police interrogation followed soon. Now this seemed quite innocent still but four weeks later something worse came to light. Mikoli was now being investigated for extortion. He had allegedly asked Mauro Lauricella to collect money from him that the owner of a nightclub owed to a former physiotherapist of Palermo. Now, and this allegedly did not happen without violence. And if this did not already harm Mikoli's reputation already, the next thing that came to light definitely did. Now, Mikoli's phone was being tapped by the police and in a conversation he had with the mobster's son, he mentioned that Giovanni Falcone was mud. Now, and if you haven't heard of Falcone before, he was a judge and a mafia prosecutor in Palermo who was famously executed by the mafia. You know, Falcone was an iconic figure in the fight against mafia. And Mikoli's words were simply unacceptable for any Palermo fan that stayed on the good side of the law. You know, after that, Mikoli stated that he was a footballer and not a mafioso, and he claimed that he would take active part in anti-mafia organizations run by Giovanni Falcone's sister. But the harm was already done, and there was nothing that could fix this stain. So so instead of having a hero sent off the same way Del Piero got at Juventus for example, Mikoli just left in the shadows and became a free agent without any ceremony. However, it did not take long for other football clubs to come calling for his services. You know, he had some options to go abroad but in the end, what I respect as well, he went back home. He went to Lecce, his boyhood club who was at that time playing in Serie C. Now he would play 49 games for the club, scoring 19 goals before he would make his final move abroad to Malta, where he would end his career in December 2015. On the 21st of October 2017, Mikoli was charged to three years and six months imprisonment for extortion using mafia methods. He appealed the charge, but with no luck. On the 21st of November 2021, he had his appeal rejected by the Supreme Court and the following day he handed himself over to the police. However, he would only spend six months in prison in Rovigo before he was released after accepting to do community services for the remainder of his sentence. It's unfortunate his career disappeared into the night. Mikuli had a huge character and he was the creator behind some outrageous goals most wouldn't even dare to try. And despite his crime, it's only fair that we also remember what a great player Mikoli was too and as one of the most overlooked strikers in Italian football.